Hi, this is a video tutorial on how to insert a watermark into a Word document. I'm going to share my knowledge on how to do that. Do you want a watermark in your Word document like confidential, do not copy, draft, or sample? There are so many ways that you can do things in Word. What I love is that you can record macros for tasks that you perform often and assign a quick key so that you don't have to go through all the steps of the process, meaning you can customize Word to the work that you do on a daily basis. Having said that, you need to know the long process of doing something before you can make a macro. I will link my video tutorial on how to record a macro in the video description for this video or you can look to the top right right now and you will see a card that will take you to that video. You can also add task icons or customize the quick access toolbar which is another tutorial I created. Again, I will link it in the video description or if you look up at the right hand side of the video, there will be a card that will take you to that video. Now to the task at hand inserting a watermark using design tab. This is the long way. If you look right now at the red arrow, you'll see that if you click into the design tab and the ribbon, you will get the icon that is on the left and you will get the drop down box on the right. So if you click on the watermark icon that's on the left screenshot, you will get the drop down box on the right. I hope that that makes sense. There are several choices that you can make as follows. If the watermark you want is any of the choices shown, you can simply click on the one that you want and the watermark will be inserted into your document. Note that the watermarks are placed on the page in different directions and they are different sizes. If you do not see the watermark you want to use, then you will choose custom watermark, which is in the drop down box. You'll see the red arrow here, a screenshot for it. Once you choose custom watermark, you will get a printed watermark dialog box, which is pictured on the right. There are several options here for you to choose from. If your watermark is not appearing in your document, chances are the no watermark has been checked off. If the circle beside no watermark is checked off, then choose either picture or text watermark according to what kind of watermark that you're going to use and the feature will work. You can see the green arrow here on the right hand side where no watermark may be checked off on your Word document. If you want a picture watermark, save your picture onto your PC. If you are only going to use the picture for this watermark, then you can save the picture to your desktop and delete it after you have created your watermark. Otherwise, you may want to save the picture to a folder called watermarks. I find it so much easier to find things and keep track of documents using folders. Let me know if that's a tutorial you'd like to see. Once you've saved the photo to your PC and you know where it is, click your mouse so that the circle by picture watermark is filled in. See the screenshot below. Then click, click on select picture and you will get a dialog box that looks like the screenshot below on the right hand side. If you, your photo is on your desktop, click on desktop. See the red arrow to the right and your photo will appear in the area where you see the yellow folders. Click on your folder, on your folder, pardon me, and then click on insert. Look at the blue arrow on the right. And your picture will be a watermark. If your photo is in your pictures, click on pictures. You'll see the green arrow to the right. And your photo will, photo will appear in the area where you see the yellow folders. Click on your photo and then click on insert, look at the blue arrow on the right, and your picture will be a watermark. See the next slide for the next settings that you can customize. Once you choose insert, you will get the printed watermark dialog box, which will look like the screenshot below. The red arrow points to scale, which is set at auto. This is the size of the watermark, and if you click on the icon symbol, you will get 
a drop down box with choices to make the watermark larger or smaller if you do not like the auto settings. If you don't like the scale that you chose, then just choose auto and click on apply and it will go back to what it was previously. Play around. You can always get back to where you started. Just remember what you did or take a screenshot of a dialog box before you mess with it. Then you can always look at it to change things back to the way that they were. The washout option, if you look at the blue arrow above, is to make the picture lighter. If you just want to see what it looks like on or off, click with your mouse to either check it on or off and click on apply. The green arrow will show you where the apply button is. It's like a light switch. It will go on or off. If you don't like what you did, just re-click. Once you've determined how you want your picture watermark scale and wash out, click on OK. Look at the green arrow above. If you want a text watermark and it was not one of the choices in the drop down box, you will want to choose the text watermark. See the red arrow in the screenshot in the bottom right. There are language choices. The default is English. You can see number one below. To change any of the settings in this dialog box, just click on the symbol and a drop down box will appear with the choices that are available for you. This works the same in Word with everything. If you see one of these symbols, you know there are choices. The text option, C number two below, is where you will type in what you want your text watermark to be. It is currently at ASAP. Just click into this area or type Alt and T and your cursor will pop into the area where you can type the text you want to use as the watermark. You can also pick from the, once you click that icon there will be choices. Your watermark may already be there as a choice. You can also change the font style by clicking into number three or typing the Alt and F keys. Whenever you see an underlined letter, it means that you can use the Alt key and the underlined letter to get the function to work. It is currently at Arial. You can use also change the size of the font by clicking into number four or using the Alt and S keys. This is currently set at Auto. You can type in a size with the keys or use the symbol to get the drop down box. This will work for all of the functions. You can type it in or choose from the drop down box. If you want the watermark to be a different color, you can click on to number five, or you can use the Alt C keys or choose from the drop down box. Note that there is an option to choose semi transparent. Play around. Remember, you want the reader to be able to read the document. Lastly, you have the option to choose diagonal or horizontal positions. Once you decide, click on apply and then OK. You can see the blue arrows to see what I mean. And the green arrows point to the diagonal and the horizontal choices for layout. Remove the watermark. To remove the watermark, click on the watermark and choose remove watermark. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to do that if your document is a draft document and it becomes final, you're eventually going to want to take that watermark out and that's how you will do that. I previously told you about making a macro and adding the watermark tool to your quick access toolbar. I have tutorials that can show you how to do this. If you use the same watermark in several documents, you can record a macro and you will only have to set the document up once. If you use a picture as a wa your watermark, just make sure that the picture stays on the desktop or folder you use when creating the macro. Use the quick keys, the alt and underlined letter as the macro does not record mouse clicks. Note above that M is the underlined letter in more watermarks from office.com and W is the underlined letter in custom watermark and R is the underlined letter in remove watermark. Just use the alt key with the, any underlined letter and it will take you to any dialog boxes that need to be completed for a function to work. We all type much faster than we click. Once you create a macro, you will love using them. It cuts down on time for tasks that we repeat often. If you are someone that forgets where tasks and Word are, you can add them to the quick access toolbar so that you can find them easier when you need to use them again. I do have tutorials on this, but I'll show you where this is right now so that you can see what I mean. 
So you can just see my mouse moving here. If you look right here, this is the quick access toolbar. Yours might be up here. I like mine to be down here close to my document and you can change that by clicking on here and you can say show above ribbon or below. It says above because it's below, obviously it'll be the opposite. So here's the watermark icon right here. I can click on it right there if I forget that it's under design. If you don't use things that often, here it is under design, then it's hard to remember where they are and you can add them here. And I do have a tutorial, like I said, to show you how to do that. Okay? I'll also show you how fast it is to insert a watermark with a recorded macro. So I recorded a macro and I assigned the quick keys of Alt W to it and I'll just press those keys right now and you'll see that the draft stamp is in that document that fast. So I didn't have to actually go into design, into watermark and into choosing which one it is which takes quite a bit longer. So that just shows you the benefit of recording macros. I hope this video not only teaches you how to create watermarks, but also that it shows you how to save time by using quick keys, macros, and the quick access toolbar by customizing Word to match the tasks that you do every day. Good luck, hope this helps you. I personally love Windows 10 and I think that the issues we have are usually always user related. Have a fantastic day and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.